clearly a lot going on in the headlines regarding cyber. Life isn't getting any less complicated. We don't expect it to. It's interesting to be tracking what's happening cyber-wise uh, uh, in connection with what's happening geopolitically around the world. What's top of mind for you right now? It isn't special, right? It is increasingly becoming the tool of any objective, right? Mm -hmm. Whether that is uh, sowing seeds of societal discontent and overthrowing democracy, or whether it is ransomware and an economic tool, or whether it's a tool of statecraft, I just I just think it's a great reminder um, that just because we've kind of gotten habituated to it does not mean that it is somehow less impactful. And, and then the realization that we should all have is either we've gotten good at being resilient bodies so that these things aren't as impactful. In other words, we're building systems that have learned to accept disruption as part of what they're doing, which may be true for everything except for influence campaigns. And I just think that is still an underreported story and now horrifyingly almost becoming politicized. And so we, we'll get in here to that. But the other thing is, is maybe for all the efforts we have, we're still not getting the message across that people need to protect themselves. I think the one to me was the hospital disruption mm -hmm. and the ambulances being sent to the wrong places. I mean, that, that isn't even a big strategic play, but talk about a meaningful play for the average citizen. So that's, that's one, is just continue on that theme. And what does it mean? Is it because we've gotten used to it? that it is incredibly pervasive, that our systems have gotten so resilient that it's not news anymore, or are our efforts just not successful enough? And I think each one of those is worth exploring. Um, the second thing that struck my mind, and it's kind of going to intersect what I'm going to talk about today, is in the aftermath of the open AI brouhaha, because oh. it's so much bigger than a kerfuffle, mm -hmm. I, I think now you're seeing groups coming in to talk about how actually AI can be used uh, in order to get more resilience in the systems we have. And so I think this intersection of uh, AI protection assurance, which is at its core what cybersecurity is about, is I think an interesting play. And then the last one, just because I'm a girl of the space race, um, I don't see us making any progress in, in being able to effectively protect or even focus on protecting um, our space infrastructure. You know, we talk a lot about a space critical infrastructure. Of course it is. It's an area of disproportionate advantage for the United States and disproportionate dependence and disproportionate challenge in terms of modifying it because it's such an installed base. But my question is, who's going to make the investment? Mm -hmm. Because that's what cybersecurity is, to make sure that the end-to-end -end ecosystem is, in fact, protected. And so I think that remains a problematic issue because one, it's not getting any talk. Two, it is both public and private. And three, I can't figure out who's in charge. And since there is a cost to it, who's going to bear that? Mm -hmm. But other than that, I can't I, I can't imagine why we still have these things because there's absolutely nothing interesting going on in this thing. I know, nothing interesting to talk about today whatsoever. <laughs> Thank you so much. I mean, you hit on some really important points. Um, Mark, how about how about you? What's top of mind for you right now? I, I know when I was reading the headlines about the uh, the cybersecurity attacks on the water systems that you were paying close attention to that. Thanks. Yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll start there and just say, I mean, not surprising. You know, it's a good reminder that our the um, our critical infrastructure has really poor cyber resilience. Um, now look, there's haves and haves nots, and we'll probably, I'll talk about that with Matt later on. But in this area, I mean, you really saw poor cyber hygiene at the utilities, you know, in terms of password management, multi-factor authentication usage, exposure of operational technology to directly to the web, um, all mistakes that we should know better by now. Um, you know, Sue brought up, you know, rightly that you know, we're looking at healthcare and ransomware right now and the same kind of thing. And and I think we're going to be in a position soon where we have studies that show um, uh, explicitly increased morbidity at hospitals in the weeks during and immediately after a ransomware event. This is beyond the obvious lawsuit from the ambulance that tried to go to one and then had to divert 20 miles to another and the patient dies. I think there's going to be even more problems for hospitals coming. So really, this it's exposing this critical infrastructure 
problem without really doing much damage in this case. What the Iranian, what Cyber Avengers did was very minor. But that does get to my second point, which is about response. I mean, I think the U.S., much like we're not responding very aggressively to 75 plus attacks on our forces. I mean, I guess the Biden administration is waiting until someone gets killed. Then they're really going to go hard at the IRGC, um, which is probably, which is generally not how most families of American troops would like to see our responses, right? I think we should be at this number of attacks, we should be more aggressive. But take that in the cyber realm now. What we saw as cyber measures, what we should do, even though the attacks didn't do any damage, we should, you know, I think we, you know, that cyber commander NSA should do a a a um persistent engagement operation against their infrastructure of the IRGC and um, and these individual groups, much like they very successfully did against the uh, uh, IRA in uh, following the 20, the, um, following in, in the Russian business network, you know, following the 2016, 2018, 2020 election malfeasance uh, by the Russians. I think that kind of, uh, you know, cost imposition is you know as we try to like have some level of uh, of deterrence in cyberspace would work and even if you don't believe in deterrence in cyberspace you have to believe in this kind of you do need this cost imposition to influence adversary actors to stop their actions those are kind of the two thoughts I have from what's going on and Teresa I'm sure uh, that what's happening with uh, IRGC uh, is top of mind for you as well um, what else. Yeah, so just, you know, kind of foot stomping a little bit on what Sue was talking about with the hoopra bra on artificial intelligence and the good, bad, and ugly there. I was really pleased, and I know you're going to be talking about this later, to see in the executive order on safe, secure, and trustworthy development, I think they're call it, calling it, and the use of artificial intelligence, the White House released that it specifically called out privacy-enhancing technologies. And I know that's, uh, for some folks, that's a dirty word. <laughs> but um, I do think that this is an, a capability that we're, is being used in our private sector today for securing AI capabilities. And not just, and I'm not just talking about the data here, I'm talking about the models. Because our models that we're using are vulnerable to our adversaries to plant poison pills, etc., um, come up with those deep fakes and successfully, and they and we've seen how good they can be. Uh, but the you know the the executive order goes on further to really advance and drive use cases around that. Um, is specifically calling out different types of encryption that can be used in these technologies and how they can be applied to mission applications and results because. We all know, I think, at this point that our intelligence apparatus and our Department of Defense needs to embrace this technology for the, you know, for for the safety and security and the betterment of our nation. So that, you know, um, I'd like to see that follow up with some implementation. Of course, we always like to see those followed up with implementation. Thank you.